All right, everybody, welcome to the video here for lesson number three in our transformations chapter. Uh, so for this uh, lesson, we learned how to translate a point or a figure. Um, so in this first question, it asks us to graph a triangle and translate it a certain amount to the left and down. So let's first start by graphing the triangle. So whenever we're graphing points, remember the first thing is the x-coordinate. The second thing that we see is the y-coordinate. So I'm going to go to the right one, up one. That's point A. To the right two, up three. That's point B. To the right six. And down two. One, two, three, four, five, six, down two. Don't want to make a mistake. They're counting, right? That would be silly. And connect our points. So I have A, B, C. Use a straight edge, please. That would be helpful. The next thing it says is to graph a translation of negative 2 minus 6. So this is going to be left 2. This is going to be down 6. So I'm going to take each point and go to the left 2, down 6. So I'll do that in green. So if I go to the left 2, down 6, There's my new A point, so we'll call that A prime. Left two, down six. That would be B prime. Left two, down six. C prime. It then says draw the vector that defines the transform uh, translation. So remember in class we talked about vector lines. They are just lines that also show direction and distance. So if I was to go from C to C prime, there would be my vector line. From A to A prime, there would be my vector line. And from B to B prime, that would be my vector line. All three of those uh, red lines are showing the same distance, the same direction, and they're also actually parallel to each other, something we'll talk more about um, in lesson number four. Number two, number two gives us this diagram of a line segment, segment AB. And it's a point A has been mapped to point A prime by the use of a translation. So how did we get from A to A prime? So here's your vector, right? What did I do to get from one point to the next? So I went to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I went up three. So the translation is to the right 6, up 3, so it would be 6, 3. So if I do the same thing for B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 3, here's B prime. So B prime is the coordinate 9, negative 1. It then says, what is the relationship between segments AB and A prime, B prime? So if I was to draw in here A prime, B prime, Notice they are uh, congruent, right? Because rigid motions don't change the size of something, right? They are also parallel because translations is this type of rigid motion that preserves parallelism. So if something is parallel, it's going to stay parallel, right? So those are two things there that we can kind of say about those segments. Number three says a translation maps point negative 4, 11. On to 18, 10. So how do I go from negative 4 to 18? Well, I'm going to have to add 22. Now, if you're not good with the negatives, use a number line. All right, so you could say, like, if I start at negative 4, I have to pass through 0, and I have to go up to 18. How much would I have to count here? So I'd have to go 4 and then 18 more. So that's a total of 22. To go from 11 to 10, that one's a little bit easier. It's minus 1. So the translation that we have here is 22, comma, minus 1. It then says, determine the coordinates of the image of 5, 7 under the same translation. So if I have the coordinate 5, negative 7, and I do this translation, I'm going to get the coordinate 27, because I'd add 22 to 5, and negative 8, because I'd subtract 1 from negative 7. That would be my new coordinate. Number four says, state a property of translations that is not a property of reflections. Be specific and use good vocabulary. So one of the things that we learned is translations were direct isometries. Which means that orientation is 
is preserved. That's something that's true about translations. That's not true about reflections. Number five, triangle lit is graphed on the axes below. It then says determine the coordinates of triangle L prime, I prime, T prime after a translation of negative three, positive six. I will tell you one of the points goes off of the graph paper. It's okay, right? So if we start with L, which is the point that does go off the graph paper, we go back three up six. So we're somewhere up here. This would be L prime. All right, so we can say L prime is the coordinate of, well, if I started at negative three, positive six, to get to L prime, I'd wind up being at negative six, positive 12. All right, so it'd be somewhere over there. I prime, if I go back three, up six, I'm over here. So I could say I prime is negative seven, four. And T prime negative three up six. We will have a point of five, seven. And connect your points up. That's it. Right? Why did I write the coordinates for this one and not the other ones? It said two, right? So we have to look for that when we're reading it. All right, if it says state the coordinates, make sure you state the coordinates, right? Uh, the other thing that we could have asked here is what do we know about the two triangles now? They're congruent. Um, there's a lot of things that we can talk about with uh, these types of problems, right? But for right now, let's just worry about getting the rules down. We'll be all good, all right? Hopefully this video helped and you're doing your homework assignment over this nice long weekend. And uh, best of luck.